Welcome to Headline Simsbury. I'm Karen Hanville. Each budget season, the boards of Selectmen, Education, and Finance evaluate must spends, should spends, and want to spends. Priorities and goals are discussed and weighed against what residents can afford. This year's budget has two additional challenges. A likely reduction in state aid due to the state's continued financial crisis and a net loss in revenue of about $790,000 from the demolition of the Hartford building. Governor Malloy presented his budget to the state legislature proposing an unprecedented, untenable $4.3 million in additional costs to Simsbury. When finally passed by the state legislature, the budget will look vastly different from the initial proposal and Simsbury will be advocating for real cost fixes from the state, not cost shifts that increase the property tax burden on Simsbury residents. The state legislature will review and make changes to the governor's budget, but the final amount of state aid reductions to Simsbury won't be known until spring. The town has asked Senator Whitcoast and Representative Hampton to work with them in advocating for Simsbury's best interests, and the boards of selectmen, finance, and education will work with the director of finance to evaluate strategies and options. The town planned for the revenue loss from the Hartford and has set aside reserves to help cushion the tax impact. Within three to five years, that loss should be replaced and exceeded with revenues from newly planned development. Although a rocky budget season with difficult challenges, Simsbury continues to be cautious with spending and finding cost savings wherever possible. As hard choices are made and priorities set for the town, everyone is encouraged to be involved in the process. Please give your input and let town officials know what is important to you. Looking for a great place to trout fish this season? Join the Simsbury Fish and Game Club. Opening day is in early April and we'll be here before you know it. The club offers an outstanding Simsbury Reservoir for fishing each season by permit only. Your Fish and Game Club permit provides a beautiful wooded setting to enjoy the outdoors at its best while you fish for large brook, rainbow, and brown trout. The club also sponsors a children's fishing derby for permit holders children 14 years and younger, featuring great prizes, food, and treats. So how can you join the Simsbury Fishing Game Club? If you are a Simsbury resident, you can purchase your permit online for $250 at www.simsburyrec.com and click on the fishing link. Or you can purchase at the Simsbury Parks and Recreation Department located at 100 Old Farms Road. If you have any additional questions, you can contact Fred Bononi, president of the Simsbury Fishing Game Club at 860-243-1280. There are a few seats left for the Survive the Drive training clinic on Saturday, March 11th. If you are a concerned parent or a student with lack of confidence in your driving or think you are a good driver but don't trust other drivers, this course is for you. It's designed to expose drivers to unforeseen situations in their everyday driving. Participants will practice crash avoidance maneuvers, skid recovery, emergency braking, lane changes, and distraction awareness. You need a valid driver's license or learner's permit to sign up, and lunch and snacks will be provided. The course is from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. and will be held at 60 White Hollow Road in Lakeville. Pre-registration is required and students will use their own vehicle you can register online at www.survivethedrive.org or you can call 860-806-3042.
Survive the Drive is an independent, not-for-profit educational resource that provides risk awareness presentations and hands-on defensive driver training to individuals, schools, and community groups. Community for Care is offering a panel discussion on current perceptions and debate over the legalization of recreational marijuana on Wednesday, March 8th at 6.30 p.m. in the Simsbury Library Program Room. The panel includes a pediatrician, a family therapist, recovery and substance abuse counselors, law enforcement, and a parent. Questions will be taken from the audience with, and the panel will answer questions submitted by local students. The program is appropriate for middle school age and older. If you have questions, you can call the Simsbury Social Services at 658-3283. Sarah Loudenslager, Business Resource Librarian, is here with What's Going On at the Library. Hi, my name is Sarah Loudenslager, and I'm the Business Resource Center Coordinator at Simsbury Public Library. We offer educational programs, hands-on workshops, and a collection of resources to help support anyone with a business research or job and career related information need. We even offer computer and technology training to help you stay up to date in your field or learn a new skill. Apple users, are you preparing for an upcoming presentation? Or do you have a message or maybe even photos from a trip that you want to share with others? Bring your Mac, iOS device, or iCloud login information to a hands-on workshop on February 27th and learn how to create stunning and memorable presentations using Keynote, which is Apple's presentation software. In March, learn the basics of Microsoft Word 2013 through a hands-on five-part course offered in our Technology Learning Center, which is equipped with Windows computers. Job seekers and career climbers, did you know an effective cover letter can be considered by some recruiters as important as a well-written resume? On March 6th, learn how to structure your cover letter and create content to best showcase your skills and abilities during a hands-on workshop led by career coach Deb Krolik. Are you interested in getting financially fit? You're not alone. Let's face it, when it comes to money, we all wish we knew more how to save, where to save, and when to save. We also wish we had a way to make sure we won't make the mistakes made by past generations. If this is a topic that interests you, bring the whole family if you want and join us on March 2nd for a talk titled, From Millennials to Boomers, Sound Financial Advice for the Generations. Later in mid-March, we are teaming up with UConn Extension's Financial Education Program to offer a real-world simulation specifically for teens and young adults to learn how to experience common spending decisions faced by working adults in the real world. It's the perfect opportunity for teens to try out their financial future. Spread the word. Also in mid-March, we will have a program that seniors and children of seniors won't want to miss, a discussion on Medicare and some of the many laws and programs that apply to people over 60. Did you know that Wednesday night is business night at Simsbury Public Library? We're offering programming on a consistent evening for anyone interested in our business topics offered. In March, join us for a fun and interactive presentation led by networking specialist Chip Januszewski and get equipped with strategies for developing strategic partnerships. Relationships drive the world. The more the positive type that you develop with clients, prospects, coworkers, family and friends, the more likely you are to be happy and successful in life and in your business and or career. And did you realize that spring is almost here? It's the perfect time to clean out and reorganize your office space. Are you in need of some motivation or strategies to help get started? Bring your biggest organizational challenge to the library on March 22nd and guest speaker and professional organizer, Regina Sanchez will provide some strategies to help take you from chaos to order. Your productivity might thank you for it. So much happens at Simsbury Public Library. I encourage you to visit our website at www.simsburylibrary.info for our full list of upcoming programs and access to our digital library. 
If you ever have any business or career-related questions, please feel free to contact me, Sarah Loudenslager, Business Resource Center Coordinator at Simsbury Public Library. I look forward to hearing from you. The Simsbury Department of Continuing Education is pleased to announce that Mike Angelio has received the Adult Educator of the Year Award from the Connecticut Association for Adult and Continuing Education. The award is presented to educators who have contributed above and beyond the normal expectations of an adult educator, have demonstrated consistent dedication and service to adult education students, and have been involved in innovative programming. Mr. Mike, as his students refer to him, has taught English for speakers of other languages, Americanization and citizenship classes in the Simsbury Adult Education Program since 1973, helping those who wish to become citizens of the United States. David Kroom, director of Simsbury's Department of Continuing Education, calls Angelio the consummate educator whose classroom oozes with genuine excitement and enthusiasm on a daily basis. Congratulations, Mr. Mike. Earlier in February, over 2,500 student athletes from 328 schools were named to the Keith Waldman Optimal Performance Associates National Field Hockey Coaches Association High School National Academic Squad. Of these student athletes, seven were from Simsbury High School. This program recognizes high school seniors and juniors who achieve a minimum cumulative unweighted GPA of 3.5 or the equivalent through the first quarter of the 2016-17 school year. Seniors and juniors who have achieved a minimum cumulative unweighted GPA of 3.9 or the equivalent through the first quarter of the 2016-17 school year have been recognized as scholars of distinction. A total of 714 students received the Scholars of Distinction designation, including Simsbury High School seniors, Sarah DePrati, Miranda Livingston, Tara McHugh, and Jane Pyatt, and juniors, Mary Clark, Devin Murphy. In addition, senior Emily Franklin achieved a Scholar of Distinction designation. Seed Saves a Life was the theme of the recent Simsbury Enrichment and Extended Day Family Fun Night. The Seed program at all five elementary schools in Simsbury provides before and after school care in a safe enriching environment. Each school year, Seed holds events designed for families at Squadron Line School, complete with complimentary pizza. Hartford students and their families and Simsbury families benefit from these events for an evening of fun and education. Last summer, Youth Services Division Director Nikki McMahon and SEED Program Coordinator Kelly Curtis planned the family fun nights for the year. The SEED staff undergoes certification in first aid and CPR each summer, and because CPR is such an important life-saving skill that everyone should know, they decided to create awareness about a new technique called hands-only CPR. Children as young as four years old can learn it. Instructor Matt Haynes from the American Medical Response provided fun factoids about the human body and demonstrated techniques related to hands-only CPR. During sudden cardiac arrest, a person's chances of survival drop 10% every minute. Haynes brought plastic mannequins for practicing on and music with just the right beat, setting the pace at which chest compressions should be applied to revive a patient. Although the families had fun as they tried these new life-saving skills on the mannequins, Haynes made a point to underscore the why of what they were doing. He said, life is the why. You now have the ability to help somebody. Eight Central School students in grades four, five, and six competed for the, high, for the school championship in the National Geographic Society's annual Geographic Bee, known as the GOB. 
begun in 1989 in response to concern about young people's lack of knowledge about geography, the GOB is designed to inspire and reward students' curiosity about the world. This year, students from 10,000 schools across the country are competing for a chance to win college scholarships and the glory of being the National Geographic B Champion. The preliminary event took place in the school's gym with students invited to watch the eight winners compete. The semifinalists were fourth graders, Evan Harris, Peter Moran, and Momin Ali. Fifth graders, Garrett Dolan and Annie Walmar, and sixth graders, Kate Morissette, Jameson Bodenberg, and James Cooper. The final showdown between Ali and Bodenberg came with a question related to a marine protected area in Hawaii called, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this. It sank Ali and almost sank Donlin too, who said, quote, if they didn't include a pronunciation key, I have no idea what I would have done. Bodenberg will now take a written test to be sent to the National Geographic for determining his eligibility for the state B. If eligible, this would be the second year that Jameson has competed at that level. And the winner of the state competition will participate at the national championship in Washington, DC, and will be eligible for a $50,000 college scholarship. Other Simsbury Elementary schools held GOBs in January and they are awaiting notification as to whether or not they will compete at the state level. Up next, meet Gus, Catherine, and Savannah, who will tell you about the upcoming performances of Susical Jr. Hello, I'm Gus Glick, and I play Jojo, the boy with a big imagination, in Henry James Memorial School's upcoming musical, Susical Jr. I'm here with two of my cast members, Catherine Bunnell, who plays Gertrude McFuzz, and Savannah Beckius, who plays the cat in the hat. Susugu Jr. is a really big musical with a lot of fun songs and dancing. We have a cast of 55 actors and 20 backstage crew members. There are two casts of 7th and 8th grade students in alternating shows. We've been rehearsing since January and it's been so much fun. You'll recognize all of your favorite Dr. Seuss characters on stage. While the characters are all fantastical, they each have very real characteristics that I think we can all relate to. The costumes are colorful and fun, and the stage crew is working hard to create some really impressive sets. The Cat in the Hat narrates the story of Horton the Elephant, who discovers a speck of dust containing tiny people called the Who's. Horton must protect the Who's from a world of naysayers and dangers, and he must also guard an abandoned egg that's been left in his care by the irresponsible Maisie LaBird. Although Horton faces ridicule, danger, and a trial, his devoted neighbor, Gertrude McFuzz, never loses faith in him. Ultimately, the powers of friendship, loyalty, family, and community are challenged and emerge triumphant. Susical Jr. is a show that will be enjoyed by all ages. Last year, Henry James Memorial School's Lion King Jr. was selected as a New England Theater Conference's Outstanding Youth Theater Production. Many students from that award-winning cast are featured in this year's Susical Jr. Performances are at 7 p.m. on March 16th, 17th, and 18th, and there is a matinee at 2 p.m. on the 18th. The Thursday night show is sensory friendly and open to all ages. Performances will take place at Simsbury High School. Tickets are $7 and are available at the door. Don't miss this magical show. The Farmington Valley Jewish Congregation will host a musical Shabbat service on Friday, March 3rd at 7 p.m. Guest cantor Becky Kiltrick in concert with the congregation's choir will provide this uplifting service for all to enjoy. The Farmington Valley Jewish Congregation is located at 55 Bushy Hill Road. The Trinity Church in Terraville is hosting a festival choral evensong service on Sunday, March 12th. This beautiful service during Lent speaks of God in a powerful and spiritual way. For more information, you can call the church at 651-0201 or email trinitychurch at trinityterraville.org. The church is located at 11 Church Street in Terraville. 
The Simsbury Chamber of Commerce is holding its ninth annual Business Leaders Breakfast on Friday, March 3rd at 7.30 a.m. in the Simsbury Inn, 397 Hot Meadow Street. Guest speakers include New Britain Mayor Aaron Stewart and Women's Basketball Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo. Tickets are $35 and are available to purchase online at simsburycoc.org. Mary Dor Clark is here with this week's Senior Center Update. Hi, I'm Mary Doyle Clark, and here's what's going on at the Simsbury Senior Center. The Senior Center will be offering a new fitness class called Eccentrics with instructor Debbie Travado. Eccentrics is a full body workout that gives you lean, strong, and flexible muscles and improves your posture through a dynamic yet relaxed combination of strengthening and stretching. Classes will be held Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m from March 7th through April 20th. For more information and to register, call the Senior Center. The Simsbury Public Library and the Simsbury Senior Center are co-sponsoring a three-part series titled Transform Your Life, featuring speaker Adele Mary Caruso, a health and transformational coach, TV producer, and the host of Create Your Health Piece by Piece. The series takes place on Thursdays March 9th, March 23rd, and April 6th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. in the library's program room. On March 9th, the topic will be creating more love, peace, and joy in your life. Participant will learn with ways to relax, nurture yourself, have more fun, see and enjoy the daily miracles of life, and reconnect to the essence of your true self. For more information or to register, contact the Senior Center or the library. The Senior Center is offering the AARP Driver Safety Course on Monday, March 13th from 12.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. This course will teach you how to reduce traffic violations and chances for injuries, update your knowledge of recent changes in laws, and develop safe driving strategies to compensate for age-related changes. The cost is $15 for AARP members and $20 for non-members. Please register through March Senior Center by March 9th. The Simsbury Senior Center is located at 754 Hot Meadow Street in the Eno Memorial Hall building. Our hours are Mondays 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., Tuesday through Thursday 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Fridays 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call us at 860-658-3273 for additional information or go to our website. Thanks for watching. See you at the St. John's Center. Duncaster's monthly series called The Art and Science of Graceful Aging will offer a free program on nutritional supplements and food labels on March 9th at 3 p.m. at Duncaster 40 Loeffler Road in Bloomfield. Dr. Eric Secor Jr. will present and lead the discussion with topics including how to read food labels, how to identify and avoid dangerous foods and dietary supplements, recognizing added ingredients to foods and if they are beneficial or unnecessary. You will also learn to optimize benefits by understanding food labeling. This free program is open to the public, but pre-registration is required. You can call Fran at 860-380-5006 or email fkent at duncaster.org. On Saturday, March 18th at 7.30 p.m. in Mortensen Hall at the Bushnell, the Hartford Symphony Orchestra will perform the music of U2, winners of 22 Grammy Awards over their four decades of music. For ticket information, go to hartfordsymphony.org or call 860-987-5900. As you may know, Girl Scouts are out in the community taking orders for Girl Scout cookies until April 2nd. This year, Girl Scouts is celebrating 100 years of selling cookies. Through this program, girls learn five important skills, goal setting, money management, business ethics, people skills, and decision making. Girls take the skills they learn with them into their adult lives. 
Here's a brief message about how the girls benefit from the cookie sales. When you buy delicious Girl Scout cookies, girls explore exciting careers, gain important life skills, and so much more. That's right. Your cookie purchase equals amazing experiences for millions of girls just like me. If you have an hour of time to spare, please consider volunteering at SCTV. It's fun, educational, and rewarding. There are many ways to help. You can produce a program about your group, organization, or your passion. Operate a camera or direct a program in the studio. Or learn how to use a field camera to record an event. All come with free training. If town government is more your thing, there is a need for you to operate a robotic camera at town hall for the meetings. Each month, Phyllis sends out a list of crew needs. Simply sign up for the ones that interest you. There's no mandatory requirement of time. Help when you can. Call us at 658-1720 to sign up or to set up a time to visit the station here in Eno Hall where we can answer all your questions. If you missed anything in today's program, you can watch this and all the programs produced by the community on SCTV's website, simsburytv.org. Support SCTV's capital campaign with a tax-deductible donation matched with funds from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Donate on the website or mail a check payable to SCTV, P.O. Box 767, Simsbury 06070. Support SCTV as we make improvements to our channels. I'm, I'm Karen Hanville, and we are SCTV, your town, your schools, your government. Since 1984, SCTV has been the place to turn in Simsbury to watch local government in action. But we are more than local government and school meetings. SCTV is the only place where you can check out all the candidates in local elections. We have high school sports and exercise classes. Other shows keep you up on health, finance, poetry, music, and Simsbury hot topics. Now we need your help. Simsbury Community TV is embarking on a major capital fundraising campaign to bring SCTV into the 21st century. We've received a generous grant from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, but now we must match it. We want everyone to watch us on TV or on our website, but even if you never do, please help so that we can continue to keep your government open and you informed. Someday, when there's a crisis, you will want SCTV to be there. Hi, my name is Lori Lubetkin. I'm co-owner of the Redstone Pub in Simsbury. I hope you'll join me in supporting SCTV. Since 1984, your connection to your town, your schools, and your government.